it may not be toxic to animals to have this high dose of probiotics in the diet, but it would not show any beneficial effect that, can, that we can see in, at the recommended level. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Young Dal Zhang, an assistant professor of non-rumen nutrition at the University of Georgia. So Young, before we begin, could you tell the audience a little bit about your background? Uh, Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Clayton. Uh, My name is Dr. Young Dal Zhang, and uh, I I got my PhD from uh, Seoul National University, South Korea. And actually, I came to United States on 2012 and started my postdoc position at University of Kentucky. And then I started an assistant professor of uh, monogastric nutrition position at University of Wisconsin River Falls and stayed there for six years and teaching uh, nutrition and swine production courses. And I recently moved to University of Georgia as an assistant professor, mainly uh, the majoring swine nutrition uh, since last year. And my research focus right now is about vitamins and uh, trace minerals and feed additives in nursery pigs and sows. And thanks for giving me this opportunity to uh, explain my research to our uh, listeners. Yeah, absolutely. We're happy to have you. Giga Technologies manufactures just all swine precision feeding systems designed by a family of pork producers for pork producers. The Gestol feeders are a simple, durable, and reliable solution, trusted by industry experts for all production stages. For 30 years now, Giga Technologies has been at the forefront of innovation, continuously enhancing sow nutrition and delivering remarkable outcomes for producers. Contact Giga Technologies specialists to learn more. And I see that at Georgia, you've been doing some research on probiotics, particularly in the nursery. But what's different than some of the other probiotic studies I've seen is that you've been dosing it at a much higher level than what many consider typical. So could you tell me a little bit about what it is you're doing there? Uh, Yes. Uh, Firstly, uh, I uh, came up with this study uh, when I saw my kid uh, uh, trying to take in probiotics at home and he opened uh, the probiotics bottles and then try to consume multiple gummies. And I was surprised, oh, this may cause some kind of diarrhea or some kind of digestive disturbance. And then I thought this could happen in swine industry because uh, nursery pigs has like winning stress always and then they uh, could have post-winning diarrhea and uh, gross retardation. And then we try to add uh, several additives such as probiotics, prebiotics, organic acid, etc. And then probiotics is one of uh, uh, kind one of most effective uh, solution to reduce post weaning diarrhea uh, that I know of. And then oh yeah, then if we uh, want to add these probiotics more and more to get better effect, then we don't know what will happen. Because the many cases, the better is not always the more is not always the better. So then I uh, I uh, thought about this, and then I uh, have this study with uh, control diets had no probiotics added in nursery diets, and then uh, we have a recommended level of uh, Bacillus subtilis in nursery diets, and then I added ten times higher dose of these probiotics in the diet to see if what will happen in their gross performance and uh, the and then got uh, the microbiome and uh, uh, metabolites uh, the in feces and also we looked at some blood uh, metabolites as well so then we uh, uh, tested with 54 pig uh, nursery pigs uh, wind at 28 uh, around 28 days and then we feed these uh, three treatment diets to the pigs and then measured gross performance and blood glucose level and uh, fecal short chain fatty acid and bile acid and microbiome. And then we measured uh, gross performance. And then interestingly, uh, when we added uh, probiotics at recommended level, which is uh, Bacillus subtilis, 
uh, it increased post-weaning growth performance at two weeks uh, the, in nursery period. But when we added 10 times higher dose of probiotics in nursery diets, there was no gross performance benefit compared to control diet, which means the, there is one that oh, it is not it may not be toxic to animals to have this high dose of probiotics in the diet, but it would not show any beneficial effect that can, that we can see in at the recommended level. And then we measured uh, blood glucose level and the specialist subtilis increased the blood glucose level, which means uh, they could have more glucose in the blood and uh, could be energy sources in this uh, the high, highly stressed period. And then we measured uh, short-chain fatty acid in feces. And then there's the also interesting research because uh, at the recommended level, uh, uh, this short-chain fatty acid, acetic acid, propionic acid, and butyric acid uh, content in the feces increased compared to control diet. But uh, there was no increase in this uh, the short-chain fatty acid in 10 times higher dose treatment compared to control diet. So which means there is some changes in gut environment or maybe microbiota when you add it to different levels of probiotics. And then high dose uh, will not give you any beneficial effect, for example, in uh, butyric acid concentration, which is energy source for gut epithelial cells and gut development. And then if you have like a butyric acid increase in, uh, in the intestine, it, it could increase glucose transporter expression so that it could increase glucose absorption in pigs. Uh, and then we also measured bile acid in, uh, in the feces. And then I would not explain all details about this because there's no the major in effect of probiotic supplementation, but it changed uh, secondary bile acid composition uh, the to primary bile acid composition, which was similar to uh, the, the change when we add antibiotics in the nursery diet which means probiotics could improve gut environment and change uh, bile acid composition that could be similar to antibiotics use. Uh, so with all these, uh, so could, uh, this means we uh, need to use probiotics at the recommended level, but not the high dose. Uh, and then even though th it may not be toxic or the, it may not cause any diarrhea, things like that, but adding more cost more, but you may, uh, our uh, pro uh, producers may not get any like beneficial effect that we can get at the uh, recommended level of probiotics. Gotcha. So why do you think that the higher level of probiotics didn't really have much of an effect? Is it because the bacillus at the standard dosing level was already concentrated enough for maximization of colonization? Um, or is there some other sort of mechanism at play here? Uh, yes, that's a great question. So, uh, so when probably when feed additive companies develop uh, this kind of probiotics, they will test uh, to set up their recommended level, and usually that's maybe one times, two times, three times, things like that. And once they set up this recommended level, that uh, could maximize animal performance or gut uh, health, uh, uh, everything. When you add uh, 10 times or 200, uh, 20 times higher dose of probiotics, uh, there could be uh, increase of incidence of post-weaning diarrhea uh, because uh, this probiotics could interrupt the gut microbiome or gut microbiota. So that then we have that evidence in fecal uh, metabolites such as short-chain fatty acid because at the recommended level, we increase the butyric acid content in the feces, which means it's beneficial for uh, gut development in winning pigs, but 10 times higher dose, uh, they uh, didn't have any increase in this butyric acid or other short-chain fatty acid. So uh, with different dose of probiotics could alter the gut, micro, uh, gut environment, and then it may impact 
the pro, uh, post-winning performance and post-winning diarrhea. Gotcha. And the last question I have for you is, what are some of the next steps for you and your team along this re- line of research? Are you planning on doing some more probiotic work? Oh, yes. Uh, so Bacillus subtilis is pretty interesting probiotic strain uh, as it's a spore forming bacteria. So it hits table and also uh, it could produce digestive enzymes and also reduce inflammatory cytokine levels when we use this uh, probiotics. So my uh, next study would be uh, when we have uh, this, that when we have uh, high protein diet or maybe high soybean meal diets. If we have soybean meal, uh, the a higher availability of soybean meal in the industry, then uh, I want to see what will happen with this Bacillus subtilis when we have high uh, level of soybean meal in the diet because soybean meal has several anti nutritional factors such as allergic protein, and then also high protein could increase. Uh, incidence of post-weaning diarrhea or maybe loose feces. Then if we add this bacillus subtilis in the uh, high protein or the high soybean meal diet, uh, I want to see whether it can alleviate this kind of uh, anti-nutritional effect of soybean meal. And then we can also uh, apply this to low protein diet because bacillus subtilis also uh, produce uh, digestive enzymes. So if we use low protein diet, then we uh, I uh, ask question like, oh, can we increase uh, protein digestibility using uh, bacillus subtilis in low protein diet so that we, we can increase amino acid availability uh, in the low protein diet? And another study would be uh, because bacillus subtilis can change gut environment and then increase lactobacillus uh, the proliferation. And then if we can combine this bacillus and lactobacillus in the diet, uh, would there be any synergistic effect for nursery pigs? That would be my follow-up studies. Gotcha. Well, that all sounds very interesting, but thank you, Young, for coming on the show and sharing all your research with us. Okay, thank you. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.